Red Barn was a fast food restaurant chain founded in 1961 in Springfield, Ohio. The restaurants were shaped just like barns and painted red. Before McDonald's Big Mac came along, the Red Barn chain served up a burger known as the Big Barney, and they also were the first burger joint to offer a self-service salad bar. Red Barn had more than 300 restaurants in 19 states, but after changing ownership multiple times, franchise licenses were allowed to expire, leading to the closure of most locations in 1988. Chi Chi's was a chain of Mexican restaurants founded in Minneapolis in 1975. The popular Tex-Mex chain was founded by former Green Bay Packer Max McGee and saw big expansion across both the United States and Europe, opening 230 locations at the company's peak. Perhaps no chain saw a more disastrous end than Chi Chi's did, which included a bankruptcy filing in 2003, and one month later, an outbreak of hepatitis caused by tainted green onions spelled the ultimate doom. Four people died and 660 caught the illness, which was the largest outbreak in U.S. history. In 2004, the restaurant closed all locations in the U.S. At one time, drugstore giant Walgreens had a restaurant division called WAGS, which was started in the 1970s. The restaurant was a 24-hour casual dining chain similar to Denny's, and some were even built right into the drugstore. There were 91 freestanding locations by the late 1980s, and that's when Walgreens began selling off several locations, deciding to focus on the drugstore business. When the chain finally sold to Marriott Corporation in 1988, they too decided to sell off what was left, but were unable to find a buyer, and all the remaining WAGS locations officially shut down in 1991. Sambo's was a pancake house that got its start on the West Coast. Founders Sam Battistone and Newell Bonnet used a combination of their names to name the restaurant, and they quickly found themselves associated with the story of the Little Black Sambo, a children's book about a South Indian boy. The restaurant embraced the story, adding illustrations from the book on the restaurant walls. In the late 1970s, controversy arose when the chain started to expand across the United States. The name was deemed insensitive and led to the demise of the chain. After trying to change the name multiple times and a series of bad business decisions, the company filed for bankruptcy in 1981. The majority were sold off, but one location remained. The original location in Santa Barbara, California held onto the Sambo's name up until 2020. Hot Shops, for those who haven't lived in the Washington, D.C. area, was a chain of family-style restaurants famous for their mighty Mo Burger, Teen Twist Sandwich, Orange Freeze Milkshake, Hot Fudge Ice Cream Cake, and a buffet bar that seemed to stretch on for days. This restaurant chain was started by J.W. Marriott in 1927, and it helped him build his hotel empire three decades later. As the hotels became the primary focus of the business, Hot Shops became one of the many restaurant chains that Marriott operated, before ultimately closing them all together. The very last Hot Shops location in Marlow Heights, Maryland, closed its doors for good in 1999. Showbiz Pizza was universally adored by kids. The concept merged pizza and arcade games to create a place where a kid could be a kid. Founded in 1980 in Kansas City, Missouri, Showbiz also introduced the animatronic stage show Rock of Fire Explosion, which featured Billy Bob, a hillbilly bear, a keyboard banging gorilla, and a mouse dressed like a cheerleader. This was the go-to place for a birthday party if you were a kid during the 1980s. And in 1984, Showbiz bought rival Chuck E. Cheese out of bankruptcy and began operating both restaurants independently. Later, all Showbiz pizzas would be rebranded into Chuck E. Cheese's. By 1992, all Showbiz pizza places, along with the Rock of Fire explosion, were gone. Norman Brinker, who brought us Jack in the Box and Chili's, founded Steak and Ale in Dallas in 1966. The restaurant was intended to provide customers with an upscale steak experience at lower prices, and while that led to 280 locations across the country in the late 1980s, it didn't last. 
Steak and Ale's signature prime rib and New York strip were favorite main dishes, and guests could also partake in the unlimited salad and soup bar. In 2008, the company's final 58 locations closed as part of a Chapter 7 bankruptcy. The parent company of Binnigan's would end up buying the brand, and over the last few years, a revival of the chain has been in the works. Howard Johnson's was once the largest restaurant chain in the United States, but it faced a wave of fast food restaurants that popped up on every corner. What started out as an ice cream shop in Massachusetts in the 1920s grew to a full-scale restaurant with a menu that included fried clams, baked beans, chicken, and of course ice cream. Howard Johnson's signature orange roof was once a welcome sight during those long car rides with the whole family. With more than 1,000 restaurants at its peak, they slowly began to disappear. The last remaining Howard Johnson's restaurant was located in Lake George, New York, and it finally closed its doors in 2022. Few restaurant chains have achieved quite the level of name recognition as Bob's Big Boy, which was a fixture in both California and across the country for many years. The original Bob's Big Boy opened in 1938 in Southern California, and while many franchises operated in the U.S., the original restaurant was in many ways the one most firmly associated with the brand. The signature Big Boy had a bun sliced into thirds, two hamburger patties, and all the fixins. But after selling to Marriott in the 1960s, Bob's Big Boy became too big and grew too fast. The expansion led to debt, and by the 1990s, stores were closing. At its peak in 1989, there were over 240 Bob's locations. Today, Bob's Big Boy isn't completely gone, but it's close. Only four restaurants with the Bob's Big Boy name remain, and they are all located in Southern California. York Steakhouse was founded in Columbus, Ohio in 1966. In April of 1977, York Steakhouse was purchased by cereal maker General Mills, and at the time of the acquisition, York had 47 castle-inspired units. By 1982, there were nearly 200 restaurants in 27 states, from Texas to Maine. What made them really successful during the 1970s and 80s was that they were located mostly in shopping malls, so people could go out and do some shopping, and then enjoy a nice steak dinner at York. When malls began to decline, so did York, and the number of locations began to drop. As of today, there is only one location left. If you are hungry for those mouth-watering sirloins, and you're in the Columbus area, stop in for a bit of nostalgia, and of course, great steaks. If you enjoyed this video, click on this playlist to watch even more. And as always, thank you so much for watching.